Now, recently, President of the Trinidad and Tobago Unified Teachers Association, Mr. Martin Lumpkin, had advised teachers not to intervene in school fights. And this morning, we're checking in with the second vice president of tutor, Ms. Marsha Huggins, to get her response on this. Ms. Huggins, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us on Now. Good morning to everyone. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago, and good morning to you and your team in studio. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Now, before we get into the, the, the call by the president of Tutor, I wanted to get your general thoughts on school fight, including the recent one uh, that we saw with the uh, principal actually being knocked to the ground uh, during the incident. Um, school violence is, is not new to us. Um, those of us who are in secondary school especially, and in particular types of schools, would experience um, spurts in violence from time to time. So it's not new. It is unfortunate that the principal of Tranquility Secondary would have experienced that kind of thing, but this is not new to us. Um, what is what I think would have been jarring was the fact that it was captured on film and uh, posted to social media. So persons who are not in the school system would be a little bit surprised by it, but it's not new to us. Yeah, I like that you mentioned that because that was going to be my second question. So it's nothing new to us. So then what then is the response of teachers? What then is the response of administrators? Is it that you have to go call, you know, the security officer? If it's a serious fight, should you reach out to the police? I mean, what is that initial form of solution when you see a school fight break out on a school compound? Um, I think the natural instinct of teachers is to intervene, um, sometimes physically intervene. What we would advise our teachers to do is to be careful how you do that intervention, um, depending on the nature of the fight, particularly that one that we saw on social media recently. Um, that was a very dangerous situation to find yourself in, especially if you're alone and you have a mob of students around you. Um, so you have to be very mindful of the risks involved. I wouldn't say don't intervene, but be careful how you do so. Um, you, most schools have a, what is called a discipline matrix to, to manage and deal with those kinds of, uh, those kinds of situations. Um, normally, you would have a, a protocol that you would follow, but sometimes in an emergency or when something breaks out, uh, you, will, you, 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 know, you try to move or you try to act as, as quickly as you can, um, but there are different ways of intervention. You can try to break up the crowd that gets there. Um, you, there are different ways that you can do that, but you have to also be mindful of the risk. If you physically intervene in a fight, you risk injury to yourself, you risk injury to a student, and if you, if, if you risk injury to a student, um, that has its own set of implications that could come from that. So we yeah. would usually advise our teachers to be very careful how you choose to intervene in a school fight. Will intervention also depend on the location of the fight? So, for example, will intervention look different if it's in a classroom with other students as opposed to on the school compound in an open area? Um, it, it would be similar. Again, it depends on the nature of the fight and, and what triggers the fight. Um, each situation would be different. And teachers, um, school administrators, deans, um, will have different ways to manage something like that. But of course, as I said, there is a school di discipline matrix in most schools. Um, they would usually try to follow the protocol, but sometimes in emergency situations, protocols may not necessarily apply. You also have persons on the compound, like the safety officer, the secondary school, primary schools don't yet have safety officers, but at the secondary school, you do have safety officers who will, um, who are supposed to be part of managing um, discipline on, at the, on the compound. So right. you, you can also incorporate those persons. And the safety officer is different from the security guard? Yes, the security guard is really the person responsible for the plant. So the physical plant, the security officer would usually be responsible for. Of course, in schools, because you're dealing with children, most, safety, uh, most security officers um, have relationships with the children. Um, so sometimes they will get involved, but that's not, not primarily their responsibility. Um, what happens on most school compounds, because there's a collaborative approach amongst all members of staff, you would find that most members of staff will get involved in treating with um, discipline at the school. But each person on the compound has their distinct role and function. So we have to be very careful of how we include different persons in that process. Right. Now, Ms. Huggins, you've mentioned a couple of times the discipline matrix. Can you share some more about that? All right. So the discipline matrix is really a, a document that speaks to, and that comes from um, the National School Code of Conduct, as well as other documents that are shared with schools from the Ministry of Education. 
um, that document speaks to how you would treat with particular types of offenses and what um, penalties will apply. So therefore, if you have a what you call a level one offense, you would probably give the student a verbal warning that can come from the class teacher or the form teacher or, or the subject teacher. Um, and, it will, and it will end there. As you go up the, the matrix, meaning as you go up different levels of, of offenses, there are different penalties that will apply and different protocols that will apply. So that's what the discipline matrix is supposed to be for. Now, I know in the case of the Tranquility Report, the students were suspending pending the report of the principal or the principal's report. Uh, has that report mm -hmm. been generated? And based on the discipline matrix, can you say exactly the outcome for these students? I, I can't because I'm not at the school um, and that information will not be readily available to us unless we have discussions with the Ministry of Education on that. So I can't, I can't speak to that at this point. But will TUTA be launching its own investigation into the incident? We are, we are, we are interviewing, we are find, trying to find out from members of staff exactly what happened. But the, the, what, what I can say about Tranquility is that that school has been on our radar for a while. We at the association, before my tenure as second vice president, have reached out to the ministry for certain schools, Tranquility being one of them, to partner with them with regard to coming up with solutions to deal with um, the upsurge of violence and indiscipline at those schools. Um, we have not gotten responses from the Ministry of Education concerning that, but we remain open to for dialogue and for coming up with practical solutions to assist in dealing with those issues. Well, I mean, some of those practical solutions, Ms. Huggins, can you delve into it? Because I know there's a general call for all stakeholders to get involved um, into these, these cases of indiscipline, especially in the school. And so you would have mentioned some of those practical solutions. Can you share a few with us? Well, practical solutions will include, of course, as you mentioned, all stakeholders. And all stakeholders will include members of the community, parents, um, tutor, uh, parent teachers, associations, the different versions of them. Uh, the police, because you, in many cases, these um, these outbursts are quite violent. Sometimes they involve weapons. Sometimes they involve contraband material coming onto the compound. So it, it means that we have to sit with all of the stakeholders to come up with ways and means of managing this. And one of the things I would like people to know as well, it is not as simple as just putting a police officer in a school or, um, or putting a police force outside. You have many um, pieces of legislation and regulations that govern um, schools. So we have to consider all of the legal issues as well when we're coming up with those solutions. So it's not as simple as saying, well, all right, we can put a police officer in a school or, or we can put an army officer in a school. It, it, it goes much deeper than that. It would really mean that all of the stakeholders, Ministry of Education, teachers, uh, members of the community, parents, have to sit down and, and really mm -hmm. put our heads together to come up with those kinds of solutions. So it's not a one one size fits all. You will, and you, we also have schools that are in, in what we call hotspot communities. Those would require a different set of protocols uh, and also means that all of the stakeholders should be, should be consulted and should come together to come up with those solutions. Right. So at least, well, let's switch gears a bit to the to the Rose Hill incident, because I know one of the solutions for that particular incident was that it's going to have increased uh, police patrols in the area. Do you think at least that is a step in the right direction to ensure that those students are safe, at least on the compound? It is a step in the right direction. Our concern is the sustainability of, of that um, of that um, decision. It's all well and good to say we are going to put um, police patrols there. Can it be maintained or sustained? And that's the issue because the, 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 the hotspot is not going to go away. You can't pick up the school physically and put it somewhere else. And Roselle is not the only school in that situation. You have most of the schools in that general catchment area and in the general East Port of Spain area that would fall into that category. And around the country, you have um, schools that are in communities like those. So what is the, what are the solutions? Yes, having increased patrols will help, but it must be something that is sustained over a longer period to ensure that the students and the staff at those institutions are safe. Yeah, and going back to the safety issue as well, because one of the things you did mention is the contraband um, on the compound. And so how can a teacher intervene in that situation or should a teacher intervene in that situation given the fact that some of the people or the students who bring the contraband on the uh, compound may be also connected to gangs? That, well, that's why we said be careful of how you intervene. Um, if you are if you are concerned about your own safety, of course you're going to be you're going to think twice about how you're intervening. 
In cases like those, then it would probably be prudent to invite the police to come on to the compound to deal with that rather than you try to deal with it for yourself. So as I said, there are different methods of intervention. It doesn't mean that the teacher has to physically go in there every single time something erupts. There would be different strategies that could be tried by schools, by administrators, by deans, um, by teachers to treat with these kinds of issues. It's, it's not, it doesn't mean that the teacher has to physically intervene every single time. If there's that real threat of gang um, activity coming onto the compound, then mm -hmm. it would be prudent on the school to partner with the police, whether it's community police or your local police station to, to come in to do regular talks with the children, regular checks, regular um, patrols mm -hmm. to ensure that you, know, you minimize that kind of activity. But sometimes it's difficult. We have to remember that schools are a microcosm of our society. So the children that come to the school are members of the same society that they're coming from. And if out there, there is gang activity, more likely than not, it will filter into the school. We just have to find ways to manage that. Yeah. And before you go, Ms. Huggins, I'm not sure if you were able to see the viral video in which the mom saw her daughter escaping from the window yes, of the I maxi did. taxi. <laughs> and I wanted to get your thoughts on that because, I mean, we're talking about that all stakeholder approach. And here's a mother, you know, going in, you know, firsthand and kind of taking over that situation. So I wanted to get your thoughts on that event. I, I want to say to that mother, thank you very much, moms. Um, we don't normally see that kind of, of, of um, approach by a parent. It just goes to show that we still have some good out there because sometimes we do get the bad, you know, sometimes you would see um, school fights that involve in parents mm -hmm. and it's normally not a good look. This was a good look and it, it really goes to show that parenting is also a major part of how we manage and treat with violence and indiscipline in school. So moms, I would like to say on behalf of the association, thank you so much. I hope it is a lesson to other students and to other parents that you know you, you shouldn't be engaging in that kind of activity um, and not to highlight the, the lawlessness, but also to highlight the good. So I was really happy to see that. Nice. And final thoughts, Ms. Huggins, before we close. Sure. Um, just to say that we know that violence and indiscipline in school is not a, is not a new thing but it would require new approaches, new thinking. Um, of course, within the ambit of the law, what we will remind our teachers is to be careful how you intervene. We're not saying not to intervene, but be careful how you do so. Understand the risks, um, understand that you may have to take a calculated risk at times, but also try to make sure that you remain safe and try to make sure that you, you keep the students on the whole state because at the end of the day, we have a duty of care to our students. Nice. Ms. Huggins, thank you so much for coming on the Now Morning Show and just sharing your thoughts. We appreciate that. Have a good one. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Have a blessed day, everyone. You too. And that was Second Vice President of TUTA, Ms. Marsha Huggins, just sharing about that call by the president that is in, uh, kind of warning teachers about their level of intervention as it relates to school fights.